This video will cover subtropical anticyclones um, as well as their associated weather conditions, making specific reference to the three dominant high pressure cells that affect South Africa. So before we start, just looking at a location map um, showing where the, high, the three dominant high pressure cells are found in South Africa. Over to our western side, we've got the South Atlantic anticyclone. Very easy to remember because it's in the Atlantic Ocean. Then we move to our right hand side, we've got the South Indian anticyclone. Very easy to remember because it's in the Indian Ocean. And then um, over the interior of South Africa, we have the Kalahari anticyclone. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that it plays a huge role in um, determining what happens as seasons change. So the difference between what happens in summer and in winter. And obviously, um, another important thing to note in this video, which will be mentioned earlier, is our warm current on our eastern and southeastern side and our cold Benguela current on our western side. Um, and then I've just I've gone over this so that you can just read over. And then characteristics of high pressure cells, so just some general characteristics. They are very large systems, they are always present. Um, anticyclonic airflow around the cell, so what that means is um, it flows in an anti-clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere, and because there are high pressure cells, air moves out of them, associated with subsiding air. And um, very often we get a temperature inversion taking place, which is an increase in temperature with altitude can result in stable air, hot and dry conditions. This diagram just illustrates um, the winds associated with a typical high pressure cell. Uh, the air cools adiabatically and reaches a temperature of the surrounding air. Uh, the air no longer rises and is thus stable, whereas rising air is unstable. Then if we look at the comparison between the location of these cells during summer and winter, Please note this is the winter picture and this is the summer picture. If we start off with the winter picture, we'll start off here with the South Atlantic anticyclone. Brings in uh, cold dry air because of the Benguela current. Um, and then we've got our Kalahari anticyclone, which is also obviously a high pressure, which um, sits much lower over the interior of the country during um, winter and we'll go into more detail around that. Um, the South Indian anticyclone results in warm moist air from the warm Gullis current moving in over the interior and mid-latitude cyclones. A big difference between this and the summer picture is our mid-latitude cyclones obviously um, shift north which means that South Africa can be hit by the cold front of the mid-latitude cyclone. Um, this this plays a huge role in um, the Western Cape experiencing um, large amounts of winter rainfall. Then if we move over to the summer picture, the main difference we see here is obviously the mid-latitude cyclones are a lot more south. And that's got to do with a shift, uh, a dominant uh, southern southerly shift of all the pressure cells. So your ITCZ, your intertropical convergence zone, also shifts down so everything just shifts slightly more south. Um, yeah, we can also see another difference is that in late summer and early autumn we get the development of tropical cyclones on our northeastern coastline, more especially to the east of Mozambique in the Mozambican Channel and this is because of the warm sea surface temperatures. I have gone through tropical cyclones in the previous video. In another uh, and probably the most important difference is a low pressure trough. And basically what happens is the Kalahari anticyclone um, rises to a higher altitude, which allows air to move in um, from the South Indian anticyclone, as well as the South Atlantic anticyclone. And these air, um, these are contrasting air masses. So your warm air and your cold air coming in from the cold ocean versus the warm ocean converge which causes the air to rise thus forming a low pressure trough um, and it also explains the development of line thunderstorms which we'll get to later in the video. 
Uh, just to reiterate that, in summer the Kalahari high increases in altitude and a thermal low forms. Then if we look at spe uh, a specific influence of the Kalahari high pressure cells, so this is going in a bit more in depth into what I was saying. This simple diagram is for winter in South Africa and we can see that the Kalahari high pressure blocks warm moist air from the southern um, the South Indian anticyclone and forms an inversion layer. The Kalahari high is strong and causes air to sink and it forms an inversion layer. The inversion layer stops the warm moist air from the South Indian anticyclone from entering into the interior. This results in a dry winter over the interior because now obviously you've got no air, no warm moist air coming over the um, escarpment and thus no rising of air. Specifically into an inversion layer when the temperature increases with height um, due to subsiding air. Uh, this is just a, a graph showing height versus temperature. Here we can see our um, temperature inversion where your, temp which your temperature is increasing with height. Then if we move over to the Kalahari high pressure in summer, we can see that it is lifted in altitude and this has resulted in the inversion layer lifting. Therefore, warm moist air is allowed to um, travel over the escarpment and reach the interior plateau of South Africa. During summer, the land is hot and air rises, forming a thermal low pressure. This is through convection currents. Sinking air from the Kalahari high pressure is weak and the sol sits at a higher altitude. The inversion layer is above the escarpment and warm moist air from the South Indian anticyclone can begin to reach the interior. A thermal low um, forms, air rises and cools, and convectional rain forms. So that is associated with your cumulonimbus clouds and your severe um, thunderstorms. Warm air from the South, South Indian anticyclone meets cold air from the South Atlantic anticyclone to form a front. This is known as the moisture front. We'll get into a bit more detail around that. Uh, just a little bit of... Um, explanations as to why some of these occur. The western part of the country, so South Africa, is drier uh, than the eastern part of South Africa due to cold, due to the cold Benguela current and thus less moisture in the air. The eastern part is far wetter due to the warmer Gullis current and thus more moisture in the air on the eastern side. Explaining cold snaps during winter. Um, they occur due to the ridging of the South Atlantic anticyclone behind a front or mid-latitude cyclone, which increases, I mean, which decreases cold temperatures um, and leads to these very cold snaps in winter. Then the Cape Doctor in summer, these are southeasterly winds which blow in Cape Town and help to um, eradicate the pollution present in the city. That is why it is known as the Cape Doctor. Then if we look at traveling disturbances, the moisture front and its associated line thunderstorms. Moisture front is a front that separates air masses of different humidities. It develops over South Africa in the summer. Note that it only develops in the summer. Uh, this is just a diagram showing exactly how, London, how line thunderstorms form. Got your air coming in from your South Indian anticyclone air coming in from your South Atlantic anticyclone <clears throat> and they converge along this moisture front resulting in air rising, cooling on condensing and forming line thunderstorms. Uh, the general path of line thunderstorms, they are driven east by dry dense air in the westerly wind belt. Just a bit more explanations as to how they occur. So basically the Kalahari high pressure cell over the interior is lifted during summer and the inversion layer lies above the escarpment. More warm moist air enters the interior from the South Indian anticyclone. Cold dry air flows into the interior from the South Atlantic anticyclone. The two contrasting air masses converge and form a moisture front which extends across South Africa. At the front the cool air wedges under the warm air. Warm, this forces the warm air to rise. It then cools and condenses and rain forms. This causes a low pressure to form and thus line thunderstorms become more severe. A trough of low pressure also forms right across the country as I'm illustrating with the cursor. Then if we look at the Tullyard model, it's not examined, but it's just a good thing to know. 
it further illustrates the development of this moisture front and thus line thunderstorms. Then if we look at coastal low pressures, these are small low pressures, um, pressure systems that form on the west coast of South Africa and move along the coast, making their way around Cape Point and then along the eastern side of South Africa. Wind moves in a clockwise direction, um, obviously because there are low pressures in the southern hemisphere. This results in onshore winds on the western side of South Africa and offshore winds on the eastern side of South Africa. These contrasting wind directions present the west with rain and fog because obviously wind is coming in off the ocean. It is forced to rise upon contact with the land that thus cools and condenses forming rain and fog. Whereas in the east, due to the offshore winds, um, they are very dry and warm because they, are, they don't have any moisture to gather. Mid-latitude cyclones wedge in behind um, the coastal lows and help shift the coastal low from that west in, uh, from west to east. They form ahead of mid-latitude cyclones and they are associated with very weak low pressures. Then the next thing to understand, they always ask this, they like asking you to draw the diagram and explain it for about eight marks. Hot and dry winds which blow from the plateau to the coast in response to a pressure gradient, which is the high to low pressure, that exists due to high pressure over the land, the Kalahari high pressure, and the low pressure along the coast, which can be those coastal low pressures that form. This diagram illustrates it really well. We've got our plateau here at about 1500 meters, our escarpment descending right down to sea level. Cool air becomes warm air. We'll explain that now. Air sinks and warms adiabatically. It becomes very hot when they reach the coast usually 10 degrees warmer. So just to explain that in a bit more detail, the cool air over the escarpment descends, um, the cool air over the interior descends down the escarpment to sea level. And as we know, the adiabatic lapse rate is one degree Celsius for every 100 meters. So for every 100 meters we descend, we warm up, the air warms up by one degree. So some of these coastal places can reach up to 40 to 45 degrees when berg winds are present. Then uh, the South Indian anticyclone and the South Atlantic anticyclone um, just further exacerbate the movement of air, specifically the South Indian anticyclone, as you can see by the arrows. Please note that berg winds only occur during winter because the Kalahari high pressure has to be present. And as I mentioned earlier, the Kalahari high pressure um, system is not so dominant in summer, rather thermal low forms. Winds from the South Indian anticyclone adds to the effect. The wind moves from inland to the coast. Hot, dry condition um, often cause fires. That's why you'll hear a lot of fire warnings often along the coast during winter. When the cold front arrives, the temperature drops and the pressure difference no longer exists. And, and then Bergwinds obviously sees. Uh, that concludes the video for um, South African climate, specific reference to our um, high dominant high pressure cells over the country. Thank you.